Yeah. Right here, this thing. Let me turn this around. Let's see. Ooh, is it too low? Let me see. Hey, it's me, Martha. Ooh, I'm right in the sun. I gotta shut this door. Oh, <laughs> that's not helping, but oh well. Turn around this way. All right, so I'm gonna like find if there's any uh, Yuma ghost stories and stuff. It says there's like a list of haunted things here. Hi, who are you watching? And um, this is it says haunted places in Yuma, Arizona. There's my town right there, my hometown. And the first one there is Lee Hotel. It's downtown. And it's Lee Hotel. People believe that one of the ghosts is the original owner of the hotel, and she is believed to knock on the doors of the rooms in the hotel. And now I go, what? Do I have to really go to Facebook to see the rest? <laughs> no, come on. Okay, the next one, anyway. Um, oof. I think I might have to, hi. Hi, Beatrice. Hi, Polynesian. I'm doing this, um, I am a creator video today um, to like promote for tomorrow's uh, I am a creator thon three. And um, just wanted to put a hashtag in my video here. And here's a couple of other um, um, haunted places here in Yuma. Yuma Territorial Prison. Yeah, that's downtown too. And the ghost adventures guys have been there and they got like really good stuff there. And it says here, the prison apparently hosts a ghost that's prone to pinching. Supposedly, it is more likely to pinch children and people wearing the color red. Hey, Beatriz, if you go over there to that prison, they might pinch you. <laughs> In addition to the museum portion of the park is said to be haunted by at least two spirits, one of which is whom, one of which whom, is reported to and then it goes to something on facebook but i guess you need to be no 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 it, it, you need to be logged into facebook or something darn it let me see if i could do that really quick uh let me see um see if i could remember some passwords uh i still win we might go shopping right now when uh, hubby turns up and um yeah we need some milk and stuff <laughs> thanks for being patient um let's see oh i can't see in this bright light right now the sun is going down but um i get a lot of viewers on um like after five o'clock or six o'clock for some reason I guess that's the best time to uh, go on live stream or do a live stream. Oops, I'm lost here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I thought I was logged in already to this thing. <laughs> um, okay, Haunted Places Yuma. I'm on Facebook. Okay, now what? What the heck? I don't know what what it's doing right now oh damn it <laughs> sorry oh well um let's read up on ghost of territorial prison oh boy that's a long thing here that's long <laughs> do i want to read that long i don't know yeah i guess i can read that all right ghosts of the prairie um this is from prairieghost.com it says about the yuma territorial prison uh ghosts of yuma territorial prison hi snowy um, I'm reading about ghosts here in my town. The first seven inmates in territorial prison at Yuma, Arizona on July 1st, 1876. They were locked into cells they had constructed with their own hands. In the coming 33 years, a total of 3,069 prisoners, including 29 women, lived in the prison. Their crimes ranged from murder to polygamy, with grand larceny being the most common. During that time, 111 of the prisoners died, mostly from tuberculosis, but even so, the stories say that some of them never left this place, even in death. Yeah, very haunted. I've been there. 
on some school trips and th some things happen. I will recount those like in a different video. Despite being a brutal place, the punishments here were very humane for the time and mostly consisted of the dark cell, a place of isolation for the rule breakers and a ball and chain for those who tried to escape. It was considered a model institution and the prisoners had regular medical attention to a good hospital and even the opportunity to learn and read and write while incarcerated. The prison housed one of the first public libraries in the territory and visitors were charged a fee to tour the prison and to check out books. One of the earliest electric generating plants in the Western United States furnished light and ventilation for the cell blocks. But all was not perfect and by 1907, the prison was severely overcrowded. The convicts constructed a new facility in Florence and last, the last of them were transferred away from Yuma by se September 1909. From 1910 to 1914, the former prison buildings were occupied by Yuma High School. Yep, there's my alma mater. <laughs> And after that, empty cells provided fee lodging for hobos and drifters who were riding the rails across the country. The Great Depression of the 1920s saw the prison in use uh, once more as homeless families took up residence seeking shelter from the elements. In the years that followed, the prison grew smaller and smaller as local residents saw the stones as free building material for their homes and projects. This was this theft, along with fires, weather, and railroad construction, destroyed most of what was left of the place. Today, only the cells, the main gate, and the tower, and the ghosts remain. Author Antonio Garces, who wrote an article on the prison for Ghosts of the Prairie and featured it in his book on Arizona Ghost Stories, collected many ghosts, many stories of strange incidents and hauntings. Reported by park rangers and staff members at the historical site, the stories often spoke of the dark cell, the place of punishment for prisoners unable to follow the rules. Okay, it says, Linda Offany, a ranger at the prison site, told Garces about an incident when she sensed a presence in the cell that frightened her. She also told him of a photo that she had in her files that was taken of a female tourist in the 19th in the photo does not appear out of the ordinary there is a clear image of a ghostly man behind her and just inside the opening of a cell this cell which has been which has since been walled up was where insane prisoners were housed before moving to other facilities she also told about a writer from the magazine Arizona highways who came and wanted to do a story about the prison the writer stated that she wanted to, to spend two days and nights in the dark cell, chained by the foot, chained by the foot with nothing but bread and water to eat and drink. Uh, the staff provided her with these things and then placed a heavy blanket over the cell door to keep out all of the sunlight, just as it would have been when the prison was in operation. The writer didn't last for very long. Within hours, she was calling for help, claiming that someone was in the cell with her the dark cell. While no records ever mention that a prisoner died while incarcerated in the dark cell, the prison reports do mention that at least two prisoners did leave the cell, only to be transferred immediately to an insane asylum in Phoenix. Could the presence be one of these prisoners still lingering behind? In addition to the prison itself being haunted, the offices and museum have seen their share of strange happenings. Things are often moved about uh, lights turning on and off, and on one occasion, coins from the cash register in the gift shop literally flew into the air and landed back in the drawer. <laughs> Some believe that the spirits of prisoners past remain here, perhaps trapped within the walls of the prison itself. Some men, whether it was humane, a um, humane facility or not, being changed up, chained up and jailed was a, wor a fate worse than death. Are they reliving it for all eternity? <laughs> That's it right there. Whew, that's long. <laughs> oh. Angela, hi Angela. Oh, thanks. Uh, Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay, oh, it's getting hot. And I'm waiting for hubby to get here. I'm waiting for him to pull up. 
I'm going to try to read one more. Let's see what time it is. It's 6.30, so he should be on his way. So I'm going to try to read one more. <laughs> Hi, Angela. You have any ghost stories to tell me too? Mm. If you do make a video response, um, like hashtag me so I can see it. Mrs. Hopkins, 73. Mm, let's see. I'm going to try that other, that first uh, website because um, it wanted me to sign into Facebook and I signed into Facebook and it didn't want to continue the story, darn it, <laughs> with the Lee Hotel. Read more. Come on. Come on. Read more. There's mom behind me. Um, I think she's like yelling at Leela. Huh? Okay, Dan's here. Okay. I'm gonna, gonna go now. I'm gonna go. Uh, whoa. I'm gonna go open the door for him. Okay. He wants to go already. All right. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Gonna go shopping.